Hello. Can hair be taken from other parts of the body? Beard, chest, abdomen, etc. What to do if I don't have scalp? This is a question which is asked by many, many patients. And to answer this, I am here, Dr. Venkatram Mysore, Hair Transplant Surgeon, Venkat Center for Skin and Plastic Surgery. For a long time, the only donor area for hair transplantation was occipital scalp hair. This changed with one simple discovery by my friend in South Korea, Tommy Hwang, who did a small experiment. He took hairs from chest, from legs, from arms and put it on the scalp. Likewise, he took hairs from scalp, put it on arms, legs, abdomen, like that. And what he showed was that when you take body hair and put it on the scalp hair, the body hair over a period of time starts growing and behaving like scalp hair. And vice versa, when you take scalp hair and put it on the body, gradually over a period of time, the scalp hair starts behaving like body hair. It grows less. This is what is called recipient influence. And this principle has formed the basis for taking the hairs from other parts of the body. Now, the second discovery which made it possible was the advent of FUE. In FUT, we had to take a strip and put a stitch. Obviously, you can't keep on putting stitches everywhere. So, once FUE came, wherein you could make a small hole for the each hair unit, then that technique made the body hair harvesting, beard hair harvesting possible. So, because of these two developments, now non-scalp donor harvesting is possible. Which are the areas? The first area that is preferred after the scalp is the beard area. In very fair populations, they even take the hair from the face, but that is not possible in our South Indian skin at least. Then the chest hair, sometimes even the abdomen, the back, the thighs, the legs, everything has been taken, but there the yield is less. Now, what are the characteristics of these hair? First, let us go to beard. Beard hair mimics the scalp hair closest. Beard hair has got a very long growing phase or virgin phase, and for this reason, it can grow very long. You might remember our old rishis or some of the uh, photographs of, of uh, Muslim holy men who grow beard for a very long time. So, beard hair can grow long. Beard hair is very thick and beard hair grows fast. In fact, it even grows faster than the scalp. So, for these hair, beard hair is quite suitable. The only point against it is the beard hairs are mostly one, sometimes two hairs. Three and four hair units are not seen in beard hair. Secondly, this area which is not seen can be considered as a safe donor area as far as the beard is concerned, this triangle. But anything above that, it will look little dotty, particularly in South Indian skin. So it is considered unsafe. So you can harvest anywhere between about 1000 to 1500 or sometimes 2000 from this area. And because the area is small, anesthesia is easy. And it can be comfortably done. It is root is not located very deep. So even a small dent in the epidermis and upper dermis is enough. So the hair comes out. So that's about beard area. The body hair, the chest hair. The advantage of body hair is that there is plenty if you have body hair. There are some men who have very little hair. That is, they are not good candidates. But if you have good chest hair, you are a good candidate. And you are not bothered about the appearance after you have harvested because this is a non-cosmetic covered area. And number three, you are also not so much bothered about the transaction because you don't mind losing this hair. So these are the plus points. What are the minus points? Body hair harvesting is tougher. The hair is thin in diameter. It won't withstand the machine extraction. 
it won't withstand the pulling secondly the root is located very close to the uh, skin so you have to be very careful it breaks easily and third you can't harvest it from the center of the scalp because there the skin is very tight sitting directly over the bone and that can lead to what we call keloids or very thick scars in addition to all this the body hair cycle it grows only for few months 3 months 4 months 5 months and it is very thin it is almost single hair and so when you take this hair and put it on the scalp the growth is number one delayed number two it takes a much much longer time almost one and a half times this a time of scalp hair and number three you need to put lot more body hairs to go the same result because it is single hair unit and the diameter is thin so for these reasons body hair is an adjuvant which means you can put it amidst scalp and beard hair but if you put it by itself it doesn't look that great often it curls and then even the growth of rate, rate of growth is less yield may also be less so for these reasons body hair is preferred along with scalp and uh, beard hair in fact one of the earliest publications on this topic is from our center when we published long time back i think in 2007 or 8 wherein we took something like 7 and a half thousand hairs from everywhere from the chest from the abdomen from the back from the thighs and then from legs in one patient over about 7 or 8 sessions he did get a very good result in that particular patient so chest hair is the next best hair after the beard can be done in selected cases in those who have got good quality chest hair lot of patience is needed yield is a bit less patient has to understand this that the growth will be slow so that is about chest hair what about rest of the body pubic hair arms legs generally these are not considered good sources for various reasons hairs are very thin extraction is painstakingly slow and the yield is very less and growth is very inconsistent it does grow in somebody it doesn't grow in somebody else so overall the general opinion is that this if somebody does it is an act of desperation we don't like to do this we like to do it only from the chest pubic hair is very thick but it is very curly so it doesn't look good there are people who have taken some few hundred pubic hairs also but in our opinion it doesn't suit the the scalp hair characteristics so we generally don't like to do this so now the summary at the end of all this is that scalp hair is the best beard hair very closely mimics the scalp hair in hair cycle and characteristics and the results and the growth body hair particularly from the chest can be done but it has to be mixed with either beard or body hair and the patient has to understand that the growth is slow and patient also has to understand that the extraction is a slow process it takes a long time is a little more uncomfortable other areas such as legs thighs is generally not preferred now one last question before i end this particular talk can you take hair from somebody else the answer at this point is a firm no it cannot be taken for the simple reason that the hair will be rejected there have been experiments in which people have to try to take but they are experiments so for all practical purposes the hair has to be taken only from the patient so the final message hair transplantation has made tremendous advances the concepts of recipient influence the concept of fue concept of body hair have added to our ability to give better and better results even in stage 6 and 7 stages of baldness so it needs the doctor to train himself 
and we are happy that in our center we have myself, Dr. Nikit, Dr. Diksha and a very good team of nurses who can do all these types of harvesting for the benefit of the patient. So choose your doctor carefully. Do not choose quacks just because the cost is a little less. If you like this video, please like it. If you think that we should speak on some other topic, please suggest it. Please visit our YouTube video and share it. Also visit our website venkatcenter.com. And during these Corona times, take care, wear mask, be safe. Thank you everyone.